George Chandler, and John Provost as Timmy. And, of course, Lassie. Timmy, you'll fall. Climbing up in that rickety stool. Why didn't you call me? You know I'd be happy to fix something for you. Oh, I need to do it myself. I'm no baby. Of course you're not. Then why didn't you let me do it? Because I didn't want you to hurt yourself. You understand, don't you? Yes, ma'am. Yes, mom. Isn't that what you were going to call me? Yes, ma'am. This should hold you till supper time. I'm not hungry. I can hardly manage this thing as it is. Get away, Lassie. Well, I was going to bring the punch. How many people? Well, I guess that'll mean about, oh, uh, five gallons, don't you? Well, I can make some more. Just a minute, Mrs. Stevenson. Be right back. Timmy, be careful, dear. You might cut yourself. Don't forget your sweater, dear. It's warm out. It's not that warm. We don't want you with the sniffles, do we? Uh, hello, Mrs. Stevenson. I'm sorry to keep you waiting. Uh, no. I was just about to say. Hi. Hi. It's a little warm for a sweater, isn't it? Uh-huh. That's what I told her. But she made me put it on. She? Who's she? Oh, you mean Mom. Now, mothers always think that it's cooler than it is. May I take it off? Well, if it uh, stays as warm as it is, I don't see why not. But you keep it close by. I'll square it with the boss, huh? It's in there. This is thinner. When I get the lumps out of here, then I have to thin the paint down. Can I help? No, son, there's not so much you can do. Mixing paint's a ticklish job. Nobody thinks I can do anything. How's that? Everybody thinks I'm a baby. She must have fallen. Number one, Skipper, it's not very nice to call your mother she. Number two, nobody thinks you're a baby. Paul! I'd like you to move the icebox now if you can. And Timmy, put your sweater back on. See? I'll be right with you. You're moving over, I can see under. I okay, Timmy, taking your sweater off. Oh? Yeah, it's pretty warm out there. No, Timmy, keep Lassie out of here. Why? Because I don't want her to track up the kitchen. Now, be a good boy and do as I say. That's fine, yeah. What's the matter with Timmy? He thinks you're babying him. But you won't let him do anything by himself. Why? Just because I love him and don't want him to hurt himself. That's just it. He feels smothered. He, he wants some freedom. Paul, he's only seven. If you've always given the impression you're afraid something's going to happen to him, then he'll be afraid, too.
Now, that won't do any good. It's all right, son. I was just trying to help. I didn't mean to spill it. I made a mistake, that's all. It's okay. Let's forget it. How about you and Lassie coming into town with me so we can buy some more? And if we hurry, we'll have time to stop for some ice cream. Now, how about it? Sure you don't want to come? You should have gone to town with Dad. I didn't want to. Timmy, everybody does or says things without thinking. I do. And your dad. And you. And then we're sorry afterwards and want to apologize. I am many times. Aren't you? Sometimes. But it's like... <coughs> <coughs> Here, back last year. Here, do you use this? I haven't got a cold. Something just must have got on my nose. I think I know what it is. Timmy, would you do me a very big favor? What favor? Don't play with Lassie for a while. Why not? What's she done? Nothing. Nothing, that is, that, that she can help. But I think maybe something in her coat is making you sneeze. Lassie hasn't even got fleas. Well, wouldn't it be best to find out first? We could put her in the barn until Dr. Stevens tells us what to do. She thinks she's being punished, and she wouldn't even know it for. Well, it'll only be for a little while, dear. Come with me, girl. You better go with her, Lassie. Put your sweater on. At least till we find out whether your sneezing's from a cold or from Lassie. That way I don't have to worry about you while you're outside. Discovery Kids will be back. Oh, hi, little Timmy. Where's Lassie? Locked up in our barn. Locked up? Who did it? She did. Oh, Mrs. Martin? Why? She doesn't like Lassie. She won't even let me do anything, either. I was making up excuses. She thinks I believe. You'll hurt yourself, you'll catch in a cold, and you're catching things from Lassie. What kind of things could you catch from Lassie? I don't know. But she still said it was bad for me to be around Lassie. So she locked her up. Boy, if Jeff and Miss Miller knew about this, well, what are you going to do? I don't know. Pokey, could you keep Lassie here? Uh-uh. My pop doesn't even like Pokey.
What's that? That's a hutch for the rabbits. Porky, could you build a box big enough for me to fit Lassie in? A box? What do you want a box for? I'm going to send Lassie back to Jeff and Aunt Ellen. Well, if you send Lassie away, you won't have anybody. I'll be all right, as long as Lassie's happy. You gotta help us, Porky. You bet I'll help you. Don't you think we should write him first and tell him? Uh-huh. Come on in the house and we'll tell him there. Can we write it here? I don't want anybody to know. If your mom and pa find out, they might tell Mr. and Mrs. Martin. Well, okay. Well, I'll go get the pencil and paper. You stay here. In the world. Where's Timmy, girl? Who put you in there? Why in thunder was Lassie locked in the barn, Ruth? Well, I wanted to keep her away from Timmy until I... Until what? Until I could ask Dr. Stevens what to do about Timmy's allergy. Allergy? I think he's allergic to her. Jumping Jupiter, when are you going to stop inventing trouble, Ruth? Timmy and Lassie were together for weeks when he lived with the Millers. If he'd been allergic to Lassie, don't you think Ellen Miller would have known it and told us? Well, maybe it doesn't show up right away. He doesn't have a cold, but he's been sneezing. I just wanted to check with the doctor. You stay here, girl. Well, let's call the doctor and settle it right now. Jenny, this is Paul Martin. Is Doc Stevens in yet? No, we're all fine, thank you. Just try and keep a secret around here. Hello, Doc Stevens, Paul Martin. No, we're all in the pink. Just a point of information, Doc. Uh, do you think uh, Timmy could develop an allergy to Lassie's fur at this late date? Yes, but no signs of a cold. Nowhere near the woods. We do have the chickens around. Come to think of it, yes. Turpentine, too. He spilled a whole bucket of my paint. Fine, Doc. Thank you. Goodbye. I heard paint fumes. Paul, I'm sorry. But, but I think something might happen to, to me. I'm sorry, girl. Really sorry. <laughs> you better stay till Timmy comes home. Will I ever learn? <laughs> I just spoke to Dr. Stevens, and it's all right to play with Lassie. You aren't allergic to her at all. Isn't that fine? I'm sorry, dear. Really, I am. <laughs> Separating you was a stupid thing to do. That's okay. Can we go to my room now? You better wash up for supper first. Come on, Lassie. He has every right in the world to be angry with me. Paul, how can I make it up to him? How can I make him understand? I don't know. You just don't know my pop. When he found out what the crate was for, he said, Lassie's a farm dog, and it'd be mean to keep a farm dog in a city apartment. But did you tell him that she'd be happier with Jeff and Aunt Ellen? Yeah, but he says you're just imagining a whole lot of things that aren't true. Well, I'm not. Oh, I believe you. But my pop forbid me to finish the crate. 
And anyway, when my pop puts his foot down, he steps all over everybody. It wasn't your fault. Thanks, Quirky. Come on, Leslie. What are you going to do? Timmy, where are you going? I don't know. Yeah. I'm thinking. Timmy, this truck's going to Capital City. Come on. Look, you get Massey on the truck, and, and I'll look out and tell you when the driver's coming back. Okay. Ready, girl? Get in the truck, Lassie. Lassie, get up in that truck. I can't lift her. Oh, look out. <laughs> You both understand that the last thing I want to do is interfere. But when I got that letter from Timmy, I... Of course we do, and we appreciate your interest. It's all my fault. I know that now. But how did he get the impression we don't like Lassie? I'm sending Lassie back to you because they don't like her here. Why, we love Lassie. You know what it must have been, Ruth? All that allergy business and locking Lassie in the barn. Timmy was sneezing, and I thought he was allergic to the dog. Oh, that explains it. I've been through much the same thing with Jeff. You see, when you locked Lassie in the barn, that meant only one thing to Timmy, and that was you didn't like her. And if you didn't like Lassie, you didn't like Timmy. You know, love me, love my dog, in reverse. <gasps> the botch I've made of things. Go ahead, say I told you so. You know better than that. I think it's important for us to remember, and believe me, I've been guilty of forgetting it many times myself, that the boy is the beginning of the man. He needs responsibilities, a reason for being. Oh, I assure you, it is not easy bringing up a boy. There have been many times when I've thrown up my hands in despair. Well, I could do half as well as you've done, Ellen. Oh, now, you mustn't be so hard on yourself, dear. But I want to be the kind of mother Timmy can trust and love. You are. I wonder where he is. I'll call the Brockways. He's probably there. Hello, Jenny. Would you ring the Brockways for me, please? Hello, Bertie. Paul. Is Timmy there? Hello? Fine. Okay, then. Goodbye. Porky came home while I was talking. He and Timmy and Lassie were together all afternoon. Oh. Well, that means Timmy be coming home in a few minutes. Won't you stay for dinner? Oh, how I'd love to see Timmy. But I think it's best for everyone. If he doesn't see me, he doesn't even know I'm here. Besides, I have a growing boy to feed myself.
Where is he? It's been over an hour since you talked to Bertie. Paul, I can't just sit here. Please, let's try to find him now. Bertie's just dawdling along somewhere. Now, don't worry. I might as well fix that leaky faucet while we're waiting. Get my pliers be right back. to her son. You'll never see her again. And neither do I. So why don't you leave me alone? Son, tell us where Lassie is. We want to bring her home. We want to see Lassie again as much as you do, Timmy. Timmy, believe me, we love you and Lassie very much. I put her on the transfer truck and sent her back to Jeff and Aunt Ellen. I'm going to call Ellen Miller and see if Lassie's there. <laughs> We don't want you with the sniffles, do we? Uh, hello, Mrs. Stevenson. I'm sorry to keep you waiting. Uh, no, uh, I was just about to say. Hi. Hi. It's a little warm for a sweater, isn't it? Uh-huh. That's what I told her, but she made me put it on. She? Who's she? Oh, you mean Mom. Now, mothers always think that it's cooler than it is. May I take it off? Well, if it uh, stays as warm as it is, I don't see why not. But you keep it close by. Okay. I'll square it with the boss, huh? What's in there? It's just thinner. When I get the lumps out of here, then I have to thin the paint down. Can I help? No, son, there's not so much you can do. Mixing paint's a ticklish job. Nobody thinks I can do anything. How's that? Everybody thinks I'm a baby. She must have fallen. Number one, Skipper, it's not very nice to call your mother she. Number two, nobody thinks you're a baby. George Chandler and John Provost as Timmy. And, of course, Lassie. Myself. I'm no baby. Of course you're not. Then why don't you let me do it? Because I didn't want you to hurt yourself. You understand, don't you? Yes, ma'am. Yes, mom. Isn't that what you were going to call me? Yes, ma'am.
This should hold you till supper time. I'm not hungry. I can hardly manage this thing as it is. Get away, Lassie. Well, I was going to bring the punch. How many people? Well, I guess that'll mean about, oh... Uh... It's all right, son. I was just trying to help. I didn't mean to spill it. I made a mistake, that's all. It's okay. Let's forget it. How about you and Lassie coming into town with me so we can buy some more? And if we hurry, we'll have time to stop for some ice cream. Now, how about it? Sure you don't want to come? You should have gone to town with Dad. I didn't want to. Timmy, everybody does or says things without thinking. I do. And your dad. And you. And then we're sorry afterwards and want to apologize. I am many times. Aren't you? Sometimes. But... but. <coughs> <coughs> Here, back last year. Get your use this. I haven't got a cold. Something just must have got on my nose. I think I know what it is. Timmy, would you do me a very big favor? What favor? Don't play with Lassie for a while. Why not? What's she done? Nothing. Nothing, that is, but that she can help. But I think maybe something in her coat is making you sneeze. Lassie hasn't even got fleas. Well, wouldn't it be best to find out first? We could put her in the barn until Dr. Stevens tells us what to do. She thinks she's being punished, and she wouldn't even know it for. Well, it'll only be for a little while, dear. Come with me, girl. You better go with her, Lassie. Put your sweater on. At least till we find out whether your sneezing's from a cold or from Lassie. That way I don't have to worry about you while you're outside. now if you can. And Timmy, put your sweater back on. See? I'll be right with you. You'll move it over. I can clean under it. All right. I okay, Timmy, taking your sweater off. Oh? Yeah, it's pretty warm out there. No, Timmy, keep Lassie out of here. Why? Because I don't want her to track up the kitchen. Now, be a good boy and do as I say. That's fine, yes. What's the matter with Timmy? Thanks for babying him. But you won't let him do anything by himself. Why? Just because I love him and don't want him to hurt himself. 
That's just it. He feels smothered. He, he wants some freedom. Paul, he's only seven. If you always give him the impression you're afraid something's going to happen to him, then he'll be afraid too. Good. 